Hi, everyone, and uh, thank you for, or uh, congratulations, and thank you for volunteering to speak at the 2022 Risk Health and Safety for All Conference, which is going to be held September 29th through the 30th um, in Pewaukee. Uh, so um, what I'd like to do is, uh, first of all, I'm Todd Lusheen. I'm an associate professor at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. I'm part of the planning committee. I'm currently the uh, Vice President for Region 5 for ASSP, and I'm spearheading the effort to uh, get all the paperwork in so that we can provide continuing education units to the attendees. And so if you'll just, you know, give me the next few minutes, I'm going to kind of explain what I need you to do in the document that I've attached to the email uh, so that I can submit all the work and get that approved. So here on the screen, we've got um, some of your titles, your names, your contact, your company you work for and uh, a quick summary so this is something at this point what i'd like you to do is think about it and you know consider do you want to expand it what would you want in the pre-conference uh flyers or brochures in order to attract people to your session that's one of the things i'll be collecting here's a breakdown of the the schedule um, we've got four sessions running simultaneously or concurrently so if you look at it there are three in the first morning two in the first afternoon and then three in the second morning that's so each person, if they went both days, could attend a total of eight sessions if they went to all of them. And you can't double up. You can really only go to one. So uh, the, the, the conversion of time in education to CEUs is for every hour you get one-tenth of a unit. So if someone came for both days and went through each session, uh, they would be awarded or they could earn 0.8 CEUs which, you know, when you need 25 and five years, it adds up, uh, or four years, whatever it is, it, it does add up. So uh, what I've done is I went and created the Excel document, which I sent you. And so here I've got a two slides that I had received from ASSP that were presented at our most recent ROC meeting. Because uh, we, we want our chapters to be offering CEUs for their speakers because it's a pretty quick process when it's one speaker, when it's a conference, a little more complex. So in order to award the CEUs, we I already have the schedule. I have a lot of your summaries, but what I don't have are your full qualifications, the learning objectives you have for your session, and your agreement. Um, that you'll that we can use the evaluation form provided by ASSP. So um, here is the here is the sample evaluation form provided by ASSP, and you can take a look at this. It is very basic. I decided to use theirs simply because that it's easier to justify. <laughs> I also provided the language from the ASSP website on um, based on uh, what they expect for continuing education. It's over here on the my right maybe your left um, and then here's the application process so i began it and i did a, a screen capture i got to restart it but i put all the information in i was able to upload um the uh that you know the planning committee how we came up with the sessions and the people we invited to speak excuse me um, the event details I need a brief description for all sessions in order. I'll re-upload that. I have to, I'm going to copy and paste the learning objectives you provide me. Um, you'll provide me with your information and I'll put that into one document. I'll probably just submit this thing we're putting together and I'll show you in a moment. And then we're just going to use their evaluation form. So once they review, they'll give us a unique um, event identification code, which then we'll be using that, we'll be sharing that with our attendees. So if they're an ASSP member, they can just log on to their account, put in that information, and it'll be put on their transcript. If you're a non, if, if our attendees are non-ASSP members, then we'll have to take a little bit more work, like two more steps, but we'll still get it done. It's just, it's easier. So here's what I need you to do. So on the second page, I've got all the sessions, your, the session titles that I was provided, your names and employers as I was provided, and the email addresses that I was provided. What I need everybody to do is to look at your session summary, that if you had provided one, make sure that's what you want. Then I need you to develop learning objectives. I'm gonna cover that in a moment, I'll show you mine. Your speaker qualifications, you know, if you've got a short bio, uh, under 100 words or 100 letters or whatever, 
copy and paste it there. Really all you gotta do is just share your education, your designations, your affiliations, your work experience, things like that. And then just type in your name um, if you approve of using the ASP evaluation questionnaire. Um, to verify, you know, the, the student learning. It, we really appreciate it if you would just agree with that. It makes things a lot easier. So uh, what I put up here is please verify that this information is correct. If you can no longer speak, contact Eric Brown right away and myself, and we have to find someone to replace you. Or if you have someone who's replacing, let us know who it is. But, but verify all these things. Um, provide the summary. The two learning objectives, that's what I want to focus on now. Um, we want to keep it as simple as, as humanly possible. And what ASSP provides is this Bloom's taxonomy. In one hour's time, it's near impossible, unless it was a workshop design, to get people to be able to apply what they're learning, you know, application to analyze, to synthesize, to evaluate. You know, you're kind of relying on um, what their past education is, and we when we're not qualifying that in, a, in order to allow people into our session. So we have to keep it very simple. Knowledge and comprehension is probably the extent you might be able to. You know, for some of the more specific topics, application, you may be able to come up with an application, but. In that case, you'd want to have either a vignette or a case study in which the audience is going to work through with you because then you can actually say that they could apply. But otherwise, knowledge and comprehension, I highlighted some of the words. This would be the first word that you have under each of your learning objectives. Describe, identify, classify, discuss, estimate, explain, recognize, give examples. It's pretty basic stuff. Just pick one of these verbs. And then what I did, and I'll scroll down to my session here. Now, at this point in time, um, my session may be a little bit more ambiguous as some of yours. Uh, this is based on a chapter I'm working on, and I'm really hoping by the time you know that I'm presenting this that the chapter's been submitted and accepted, and I'll have thing. I'm going to be covering parts of it. I wouldn't have time to cover everything. So this is a uh, an edited paragraph from uh, my intro part of my chapter and, I, and I'm not going to cover all that I'm going to be covering in the chapter but I'm really going to focus on the research that indicates how media influences uh, both individual and group think and then I'm going to um, really align that with some of the lessons learned from the pandemic that even people in the safety and health field with the degrees and the designations indicate their professionals were misinterpreting or misspeaking on certain things. And it really, it, it, it's because of maybe their inability to properly assess the reliability and validity. Okay, you can go to my session if you want to hear more. So the two learning objectives I create, I chose the words define and summarize. And the first is how media sources influence public individual views of safety and health. That's going to be, you know, like a 20, 25 minute portion of my presentation, which I go over the research, the psychology and the sociology, given some examples from the news, from reliable sources. Then I'm going to pivot to how I was trained as an academic to evaluate the validity and reliability, but I'm going to simplify it to probably just face velocity, face validity, and some of the more reliable sources that are out there. That whenever we hear something or learn something, whether it's anecdotal or um, just you know participating in something like this, that there's a place where we can go verify, um, trust but verify type of thing. So simply, I'm just using those two as my learning objectives. If you just want to provide one, fantastic. Try not to provide three. Um, try to simplify it. That's the KISS method. Keep it simple, silly. And then for my um, my bio, I just put on there really quick my uh, my education, my designations, my work experience, um, and my affiliation with um, ASSP. That's what I put. And then I put my how I would put my signature, my kind of my digital signature here to verify. Yes, I agree. We to use the ASSP evaluation for my session. So that's really everything I wanted to cover. I kept this under 10 minutes. If you have any questions, please email me. But I don't want this to take much of your time. You know, if you could just put in half hour maximum, slap this together, put it in here, send it back to me. I really appreciate it. The sooner the better so I can get this submitted and then we can update our um, promotional materials to get more people to come to the conference. So again, thank you. 
um, for volunteering to do this. I really look forward to sitting with you or maybe having lunch, talking with you um, sometime you know, at the end of September. Thank you.